I was never told what laws there are. All right, Dave, once again, great lyric. It's very poignant, but under no circumstances should you be using that as a defense in court. Anyway, if you don't know who Dave slash Boy in a Band is, he's the rapping Fire Emblem protagonist that you've seen across YouTube. And also, fun fact, he dated a 16 year old when he was 22, and I have his confession to that, which I'll show you in like a minute or so. Probably should have led with that, huh? But in all seriousness, Boy in a Band is a rapper on YouTube who has worked on some of the biggest collaborations in the website's history. This includes songs with PewDiePie, The Odd Ones Out, iDubs, and Jaden Animations, the latter of whom actually just took down said collab. So that, mixed with the fact that I'm making a video about this dude, is probably not a good sign, right? Nonetheless, these were massive projects in YouTube culture. And independently, he's also a very successful creator with over 3 million subscribers. But he stopped posting videos in late 2019. So... Why am I bringing him up almost three years later? But before we answer that question, just to disclose any potential personal bias, I kind of liked the song about not staying in school, and I've seen some of those big collabs. That's really it. I've never really followed this dude and I was never really a fan, so there you go. But to answer that question of why is his name coming up now, a letter was posted to his subreddit in which he was accused of years of abuse. The letter is allegedly from a group of Dave's ex-partners, originally written to his family in hopes of them intervening in and stopping his behavior. And this post had a bunch of accusations that I will go through, but it's really important to note something first, which is that there has not been any evidence of any of their claims, and all of the accused users are anonymous. They even repeatedly say that they have proof of their claims, but they never provide any. I'm not going to act as an apologist or defend Dave's reputation or character without evidence of his innocence or pass judgment on if someone is lying. However, I'm not going to sit here and present rumors as facts and misinform people just for some sweet, sweet clout. I'm not a TikToker, sorry. And I'm making this video specifically for that reason. Commentary creators have a history of absolutely shitting the bed the second someone is accused of anything, whereas all I care about is providing the facts and my take without pretending one is the other. So if me having to acknowledge the things about the situation that aren't clear is going to piss you off, just imagine for a second that I'm talking about your favorite content creator who was also accused of things by an anonymous account. The first accusation is that Dave had a history of dating younger girls, including fans. Uh, this included a 17 year old when he was 23, which right off the bat is already gross. I'm around that age and would be very hesitant to date a 21 year old, let alone that. And allegedly he hit this woman and told this to two future partners, presumably two of the ones writing this letter, but they don't specify. And they say that they can prove this, but they don't. In fact, I was the one who had to find proof of Dave dating a teenager because the letter didn't provide it and I wasn't making this video without something concrete to go off of. So, on Dave's first website, I used the Wayback Machine to find a second website where I found a blog post he made in 2011 where he says he was dating a 17-year-old since she was 16. And at that time, yes, he was 23, so he dated a 16-year-old when he was 22 and here is him admitting that. <sighs> Now, the age of consent in England was and is 16, so he didn't do anything illegal, but I feel like if your relationship requires any thought at all to be given to the age of consent, you probably shouldn't be in that relationship, right? Anyway, back to the letter. They then link a song when they claim that this girl, Rachel, sings the lyric, Take Me Without My Consent. But this video doesn't specify anywhere that Rachel is the singer. But for that line about consent, the song was written in 2011, which yes, was a different time for edgy humor and for discussions about consent. So I'm trying not to view it with a 2022 lens, but that's really hard because it's still a fucking weird lyric, dude, especially if it's being sung by a 16 year old. Take me as I am. Take me right now. Take me whenever you need. Take me. I won't say no. There are so many options to get across the Dom sub thing that he was going for. So it's really weird to me to go out of your way to say no consent. Like, you're allowed to be subtle in your lyrics and leave the kinks at home, weirdly enough. Allegedly, Dave also had a history of dating young fans before eventually discarding them once he felt he no longer had control over them or could benefit from them. He would also take the same approach to his friendships. Now, there actually is more credibility to part of this claim, but said credibility is not provided by the letter. It actually comes from a comment on the post from a collaborator of Dave while he was coming up on YouTube. Apparently, Dave began asking this friend to do things outside of his area of knowledge, which the friend wasn't able to do. So when this friend was no longer useful, he says that Dave ghosted him. The friend also says that he knows some of the women making these accusations, one of whom he's a close friend with. Some of the accusations are things he witnessed for himself, but he doesn't specify what, and he doesn't find the rest surprising. Now I know what you're already asking. Do I have any proof that this isn't just some rando online? 
Well, the Reddit account is 10 years old and shares a name with the Instagram account that this user links with posts of Dave dating back almost a decade, and the Instagram account seems to be the same person the Reddit comment claims to be in the videos. And this is quite literally the only thing that gives the post any credibility, and it's still not that much in my opinion. Anyway, according to the post, multiple partners from Dave's past ended up requiring therapy from the abuse that took place in these relationships. They go on to say that he specifically seeks out partner with whom he can have some kind of control over and would body shame them if he wanted them to lose weight, which is especially bad when you remember he helped Jaden make a song about her eating disorder. They also claim that he would coerce his partners into being polyamorous and use his mental health as leverage to prevent them from leaving him. On the topic of mental health, they also mention a history of abusing his meds by mixing them with whiskey and weed. Now, in this case, I actually have a screenshot that supports this claim from Boyna Band himself. See, on his YouTube page, he made a community post where he held a poll about whether or not he should take an excessive dose of antidepressants to speed up the effect. To put that on your audience while making a clear cry for help is concerning to put it mildly, and it does suggest a clear drug issue in my opinion. Also, now that I think about it, it does support the idea that he has an inappropriate relationship with his fans on some level, because it is a really weird thing to do to ask a bunch of teenagers like, hey kids, should I overdose today? Yes or no? But back to the letter. At the bottom, the writers include texts of proof of what they're saying, but the texts are all between anonymous victims of Dave, not with Dave himself. I'm not trying to imply whether or not these messages are fake, however, I cannot overstate how easy it would be to fake these messages. Like if this serves as definitive proof of their claims, then here's definitive proof that Mr. Beast likes to spit on my food at every meal and I kind to like it. Like, were there no messages from Dave that could have been included across apparently dozens of girls? And yes, those can also be faked, but I feel like that would still be at least a little more tangible, you know? So what's my overall take on the letter? Well, I'm sorry to say it, but just like there's nothing to directly suggest that this letter is a lie, like direct contradictions, there are also multiple things that just make it impossible to accept this letter as blatant truth as so many are. What do I mean? Well, there's the fact that the writers of the letter constantly say that they can prove their claims, but they don't, and they don't provide a reason as to why. The fact that this letter is completely anonymous. The fact that there's proof out there about him dating a 16-year-old at 22, yet they couldn't be bothered to include it. If this post is about preventing future victims, why would you not track it down or at least add it in an edit? The fact that the word abuse is thrown around constantly, yet very few specific instances of abusive behavior were described. In fact, in the introduction, they specifically say he was guilty of emotional, financial, physical, and even sexual abuse but they don't provide any examples of financial or sexual abuse. They also say that the number of people writing the letter is way in the double digits, which could mean 15 or 99. Also, you mean to tell me that out of the dozens of victims who allegedly wrote this letter, not to mention the victims who are just out there in the world, none of them have come forward with their identity in the last, what, month since the letter was originally posted? Now, none of that means that the letter is fake, and I'm not saying I think it is in the slightest, but there is nothing about this post that an individual with a vendetta and too much time on their hands couldn't have accomplished. The only credibility is the word of someone who is not a public figure that hasn't spoken to Boy in a Band for almost a decade. And people lie. I'm not saying the ex-friend is at all, but theoretically, if Dave was just a shitty dude, what is stopping this ex-friend from orchestrating this whole thing? I don't have any reason to think that happened, and I don't think that's what happened, but if the possibility exists, then the discourse around this topic should not be nearly as definitive as it is. Now, it's worth noting that Dave's ex, Shona Laka, actually posted a diss track against Dave where they mostly criticized his decision to collab with PewDiePie given his past controversies, and they felt like Dave was not interested in their feelings on the matter. Also in the diss track, Shona Laka says that Dave didn't visit them in the hospital because they would not step away from work in order to do so, they would go periods of time without communicating and would blame depression for withdrawing or being, as they put it, a dick. And this is a claim made by the letter, that he would leverage his mental health in order to get away with a lot more. And while the diss track isn't directly relevant to the situation and it's not directly alleging abuse, this was the one verifiable ex that I am aware of that publicly spoke out against Boynaben, so I wanted to include it. And if I may make a suggestion, if it's possible, 
the person who made this, Shona Laka, is a public figure. So having them act as a representative of the people that penned this letter would be an amazing way to add a ton of credibility to it. That way, there's someone with a reputation on the line, so they are motivated to tell the truth to the best of their abilities. And I combed through Boy in the Band subreddit for hours looking for anything that I could be missing about this story, but almost every claim about this guy is made by an account whose identity I cannot verify. And most of them are just saying that the dude's a dick. Like, no one is alleging the serious things that were being said in the letter. And Dave has not responded to the situation at all. Which, yes, would usually be suspicious, but he hasn't made any content on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube in the last year and a half due to a mental health break. So it's not as surprising as if it was, say, Mr. Beast. So what exactly am I getting at here? Boy in a band did nothing wrong. Dave's a messiah. He can't do anything wrong ever. And I stake my entire reputation on that fact. No. So let's review what the letter said that has been supported by someone with a connection to Dave, and let's also review what has not been supported from what I can find. He has an issue with mental health and substance abuse which made its way into his relationships, which is supported by Shona Laika. He dated a 16-year-old when he was 22, which is f***ing gross and that's supported by the evidence I provided. Those around Dave feel as though he casts people aside once he does not see use for them, which is corroborated by Shona Laika and the ex-friend. Now, what claims from the letter have not been supported by someone with a known name or face? Him ever dating fans or dating a teenager in the last decade. To be clear though, still fuck this guy for dating a 16 year old when he was 22, that's fucking gross. Him coercing polyamory or weight loss, multiple partners requiring therapy because of him, and him hitting one of his partners. So what I'm getting at is that I have a problem with people stating as a fact that he is a groomer or anything else when nothing that has been put out is enough to make those kinds of definitive claims with any kind of confidence. And I know people say that the exes have to remain anonymous in order to avoid lawsuits of slander and libel, but if they have the proof that they say that they do, then they can't successfully be sued for that. So that argument doesn't work. Not to mention, if there are so many of them that witness this behavior, that also makes that kind of lawsuit pretty frivolous. And I'm not saying there has to be proof for this to be taken seriously at all, but when the word proof is constantly being thrown around but it's never provided, the fact that anyone who's followed Dave for a long time could have easily written the letter and made the text within a week, and there is no face with anything at stake if all of this is proven to be a lie, I think it might be time to just take a step back and go, whoa, we really don't know much here. Let's just wait for the situation to develop before we go on Twitter and TikTok and start making definitive statements with zero context or mention of all of the issues I just provided. And the wild thing is, I've been doing this long enough to know that despite me pointing out multiple things that this dude did wrong and providing more concrete proof of it than anyone else I've seen, I am still going to get called an incel, an enabler, and an apologist. When my whole point, and hopefully your takeaway, is hey, this is the situation as it currently exists. It does not reflect what people are saying right now. So we need to wait for more information before we jump the gun on this and cause a guy with a clear history of mental health issues to no longer be alive. Like call me crazy. I don't think that should be a hot take at all. Also, if you enjoyed watching me dissect this topic and you want to see me do it again, YouTube thinks that across my entire channel, this is the video you're going to get the most out of. So maybe check it out after leaving a like. And I'll be the first to say it. I know I've criticized a lot of British people lately. I mean, first it was Andrew Tate, then it was Ned from the Try Guys who, yeah, he was technically born in America, but he went to Yale, so he's British. And now it's Dave, so do I just hate Brits? Yes. But